Hey ladies and gentlemen, this is Greg McLeod here with the Elite Traders University presentation of the Pip and Run Money Map, the Forex Scalping Map presented to you by the Elite Traders University. And it's so great to be with you here and uh, we're going to get started momentarily. Uh, we have a great program ahead of you, ahead for you to show you uh, the different technical levels that I'm looking at in trading the market uh, in the majors, gold, and, um, and the US dollar index. And let's go ahead and get started. Let me direct your attention to the risk disclosure on your screen to make sure you understand all the risks associated with foreign exchange trading. And for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Greg McLeod. I'm the founder and CEO of the Elite Traders University. I'm a 21 year trading veteran and trading trader mentor. I traded options, futures, stocks, and forex. If it has a chart, I have traded it and traded it well too. I'm the one of the foremost authorities on short term day trading and, and scalping. Short-term trading is my specialty. I love getting in and out of the market very fast. And, um, and I've also spent eight years as a currency analyst and trader coach at uh, Daily FX. And I also uh, spent 16 years as an instructor in public education. I also worked at a trading desk and a top tier bank. Whew, boy, I've been busy for the past 21 years. And I'm here to help you find uh, profitable opportunities in the market. So let's go ahead and get started. I want to... Um, First of all, I mean, we got a lot of big things going on in the news. We have Donald Trump, the president of the United States, going abroad and being well received in Saudi Arabia, winning big contracts for lots of uh, U.S. Um, military goods and uh, services, opening up markets and things like that. And that's very good considering that he's got uh, some things going on at home uh, with the Russia investigation and the and uh, um, the whirlwind things. So it's good things things are going for the president um, abroad and um, can leave some of his troubles behind. And we see that the euro is following upward as well. But uh, before I want to go ahead and uh, get into the charts. Let's go ahead and uh, pop in some charts here. Chart, chart, chart. Uh, I want to start with the U.S. dollar index. Usually I, I like always like is a hindsight like oh man I forgot about the US dollar index can't forget about the US dollar index that just lost a bunch of three quarters of a percent on uh, on Monday I mean on Friday and uh, let me go ahead and just uh, square this up for you to fit in this screen here and we can see um, that we have this uh, big kind of like move down um, in the uh, we broke key levels of support just all the way down. Here's a daily. This is a daily chart. We had higher swing highs, higher swing lows, and you know I've been looking for this for a long, long time. You know, you saw me draw my, you know, my famous now famous head and shoulders pattern. And I go, when is this head and shoulders going to show up? You know, I mean, it got, makes me want to go buy a bottle of head and shoulders shampoo. You know, trying to get this thing uh, going. And uh, you know, basically we've got, uh, you know, we had a shoulder. Uh, that took us up around the 102 area. We got a head that took us about uh, near 104. You know, there's a wee bit up to the 104. Whoa, 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 whoa. We got to let go. Let go. All right. And um, so that was our the head. And then um, we had a trend line break. Significant trend line break 101 back in uh, uh, February uh, 2017. Then we had this rally up. Um, and so we have the, the foundation of our, our head and shoulders pattern. And we need a confirmation of that. We need a break of the neckline. And now we've got that break of the neckline. Okay. Now we have a false start there because then we got down here to the neckline right here back in March 29th, uh, 2017. Rallied off the neckline. So that kind of like short squeeze rally got you know, a lot of people on the wrong side of the trade. Boom, the thing rallied up to about uh, 101.25, rode into the, the, the supply zone, and then just took off down to the south side here. Broke gap down. Uh, this is like the um, the year, the election. This is uh, the French election. And then I rallied to try to gr get back above that 99th handle, and then bam, this is this love, this neckline acting as resistance, and then price dropped. Okay, so now all those price targets I was telling you about in previous videos where we had this neckline, well, now we, these are now come and sell. Okay, and um, now once we broke this, the price projection, we, this is how we figure out price projection. And please continue to sign up for free. I have an account. I have an account. Let's see. 
and uh, I can log in, right? And I log in with Facebook. Yeah. All right. I'm in. Okay. There we go. And so we've got this. We get this is our the way we figure out the price projection on the head and shoulders pattern is we measure the top of the head down to the neckline. So I basically clone this like a sheep. Now I've got this line that's equi equidistant or at the same height. And now I go down to the neckline where the break happened and just attach it right there. And now I've got the length of the potential profit target for this move down forecast. Okay. Oh, it happens to be this old wick low from November 9th, 2016. Hmm. How convenient is that? So they already know where this thing is going to go, right? And now you do too. Right? So what does this mean? Well, I don't trade the dollar gray. I don't really care. Oh, no, no worries. Um, <laughs> and let me put an arrow down here. Give me some arrow action. And uh, let's, uh, there you go. That's it. So you got it. We got a zero. And all I'll do is I'll go ahead and post this here. I'm going to take a screenshot. And I'll post that in our VIP Pip and Run chat room. And uh, that way you'll have be able to uh, view it and take a look at it. Now, what does mean? What does what does this mean? Okay, if you don't trade this, well, th what is the opposite of the U.S. dollar index? Uh, and if you say the euro, you're absolutely great. The euro is considered the anti-dollar. So if we take a look at the U.S. dollar, I mean the euro, the euro versus the U.S. dollar. Oh, look at that! It's an inverted head and shoulders, right? Yeah, that's pretty cool, Greg. I thought you I thought you would like that. Right? So what does that mean? That means we can get long euro. Okay. I'm like this this is not our, our remove, okay. Um now this broke the neckline here. I mean I'm gonna, I'm just going to not gonna redraw the pattern. You're gonna have to use your imagination to be able to see the shoulder here. And I'll I I know I can do that. I can I'll help you guys out. I don't see it, Greg. No worries, no worries. That's your that's the shoulder. This is the inverted head and shoulder, so it's standing on its head. And let me get rid of this volume. We don't need volume. Okay. And then we have another shoulder over here. There we go. So we got another shoulder. So we got shoulder, head, shoulder. Now we can draw a neckline. And this neckline is kind of weird because it's like right here. Right? Right? It's kind of weird. Kind of ugly there. So there. Shoulder, head, shoulder, neckline broke. And it gapped. This was the election, and just continued spiraling upward. Look at that move. Look at that big move, right? And oh, there is that other wick again. But let's measure this out, not cheat. Now there is a wick there, so we take the that I usually go to the highest, uh, the, the the farthest wick, most extreme wick, I'll say, or the lowest wick. So there you go. I have my measurement from my head to my uh, to the chart to the neckline I'm going to clone it like a sheep and I'm going to go to the breakout point which is here around the uh, that was about 107 107.60 and uh, we're actually almost at the price projection okay so so we're actually exceeding that but that wick there looks real familiar this looks like it's upside down in fact, I would take this chart and turn it upside down. It's the U.S. dollar index. A majority of the U.S. dollar index is the euro and European currencies. So there you go. Uh, so 112.94. So remember, Donald Trump wants a weaker dollar, and given all the turmoil going on, you know it's working. You know, it's working because a weaker dollar is going to it's going to um, you know make the Amer American exports cheaper. And uh, bring more foreign capital into the U.S. Okay, um, and it'll encourage U.S. investment. So there you go. So that is um, my forecast for the euro. I'm looking at even this. Uh, there's a whole bunch of congestion here at the one uh, one spot two nine four. Might as well say one spot uh, thirteen area. Lots of congestion there, and we can do other things too. Other magical things. We can take Fibonacci expansion targets. 
because there's Fibonacci people out there who are looking. And we can take a three-point Fibonacci expansion, taking the last swing. Oh, look, the 1.6 away happens to be huh, the congestion zone where I drew the line. Hey, Greg, you planned that out. No, it's, it kind of works out. It's called math. <laughs> Pretty good stuff, huh? In fact, you can see a head and shoulders on this side, too, that came down. And now we're just kind of like flipping around. Whatever happened on this side happened on this side, and it's like pretty cool, like symmetry. So we're looking at this um, area uh, as a possible target. So still a lot, not a lot more to go. Very what? No. One is one twelve, one twenty, one two oh seven. So about another hundred pips or more. I mean, there's this old high back here, and this would be a two point six one eight expansion target. One seventeen fifty eight. So plenty more to run um, in this. And we just have this really major con congestion zone here that we have to worry about right in here. Okay. So th we've got that. Now, if it cuts through that, then, you know, it's off to the races. We're looking at like 119. You know, this looks, I mean, this big giant leap here is what we're looking for. In fact, I, I'm actually, I'm, I'm pulling for 117. I think we get back up in here. Uh, that's a typical target from um, that we would see with all that congestion but then the retrace of all that that's gonna be that that's gonna be nice once we clear 117 it's gonna be very smooth sailing for the euro okay and remember Mario Draghi talked about you know um, you no know, getting rid of that the QE and normalizing rates and so that's very bullish for the euro and we've also seen some inflation in some of the European countries as well and so that is uh, all that is um, voting well for a stronger euro. Now let's go to my charts. We've talked. We talked about the the euro, and we looked at um, um, the U.S. dollar index. And what I'm going to do actually is go to gold. Long as I'm on this kind of chart, so I have to flip back. In fact, but we do have gold. Um, we do have XAU USD. We have that as a forex currency pair. But this is kind of clear. Um, so we have a little bit of a pullback um, from this area. I was looking for our, a, a move back up to about 1300 area. We have nice support there. You know, uh, we got down to 1215. So it was a little early on my call for 1300, but this thing is setting up higher swing highs, higher swing lows. And, uh, we, you know, we can draw a nice trend channel. And um, now that we've placed the bottom on gold, and uh, again, kind of like skipping it because I'm here and I'm gonna clone that All right and you know we have that you know, the top of the channel is gonna take us above 1300 so um, that would we would look at uh, going back maybe a break above uh, a break above we have a support daily support 1246 and then we have a high 1263 we break 1263 then it's off to the races uh, but we're probably stuck in a stuck in a bit of a range here for for a bit in that range. All right. Let me go to, to the e-signal charts and uh, oh, let me go ahead and pause that. So here we go. Now, now these are daily charts of daily support and resistance levels. I draw those. I like scalping because you, you, Greg probably probably saying, guys, hey Greg, you're on this daily chart that you're a scalper, man. What's going on, dude? Well, watch this. I start with the daily chart with swing points, swing highs and swing lows and we drop down to a 60 minute chart where uh, pretty good scalping opportunities are there and we've got nice move um, that we, we broke uh, and then we came up right up. This is an old daily support level that I drew months ago. Remember I drew these lines back in February, right? Lines are still being respected. Uh, we came down here and broke back above. As soon as we got above 111.23, boom, off to the races. Okay, nice move. A break above 110.46 uh, was an, uh, a very good move. Lots of green candles, not very many red candles. And what we we're looking for is a continuation. Of the, but this is a 3.45. So we might look for some type of a correction. We're at this level of resistance. So we might see Monday pullback. Love to get long on on um, maybe even a pullback to this um, one oh uh, one spot one zero seven eight two. Um, that might be a pretty good level to um, 
for some type of a correction that happens here. If not, a break above one spot, one, two, 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 and then we go right to the next level of what I have here, 113.04. Look at that. Mm. There we go. Whole number round number, and we could see a break there with just a flat consolidation. Again, we could see if this area holds, if we get a rejection here, then we can see because we extended one, two, three, four, five, and usually we'll have a three wave correction against the trend and A, B, C, and then um, you know anywhere here this 200 simple moving average here, one on one ten, uh, one one spot one o four five five, um, and anywhere around here uh, the the one one eleven zero zero, this area might be some pretty good levels of support. Looking to get get long. When you, um, when you get a trend that's been running like this, it it has to take a break, and sometimes we'll get some type of a three wave correction break. Which will give us a chance to get back long in the in in the pattern. Okay, so that's um, so I'll be very careful here. I mean, this is an uptrend, higher highs, higher lows. We we look to buy the break. However, this is kind of long in the tooth and could be very oversold. Even though you know charts can be remain oversold for longer than we can remain solvent, right? To try to short something that's constantly moving, not going to work. But here is where we have through a three wave correction here. Against the trend one, two, three, and ABC, and then boom, all right? So look for the ABCs. This is where you like to want to get long. Um, when you, after in an uptrend, you want to wait for the pullback through wave correction and then pull the trigger, right? Um, so again, um, I'm looking at the getting long anywhere in that one spot one zero four five area to one spot one 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 zero zero. Okay, well, let's go to the bridge pound. British Pound says uh, some big fat finger order came through. We have a real spike. That spike right there was uh, some type of a uh, fake order um, that came through. Uh, that's what some trading desks were talking about. That was a fat finger trade. It wasn't real. Um, it, that's why it didn't last. And look, we that drop and we went back exactly to where it started. So it kind of tells you that it wasn't legit. But it been a great at the 200 simple moving average look hit down to a daily support didn't quite get down to this one but closed back above it and closed back above the 200 uh, great day trade if you were in it to win it been, it would have been nice right um, but now we're uh, trading up against another daily support almost a double top okay and we have manic Monday and sometimes what happens is the, the trend is up Okay, and everyone's excited. You know, Friday, it's up. You know, then the weekend, they say, "Man, I can't wait till Monday happens. I'm gonna get long again." And as soon as you get long, what happens? It drops, right? So you got this low volume kind of. You know, people are taking three traders are taking three day holidays. They come back to Tuesday. Then the real volume comes back up after this thing drops, pulls back, washes out people who are trying to get long early. And then what happens is they come back Tuesday. We get the real market taking the market back up the direction that's trending, which is up. And we can see that from this daily chart, you know, it's also the anti dollar, right? Higher swing highs, higher swing lows, right? And so that's what we're we're looking at for the for British pound. I you know, um, we got a double top scenario here, uh, resistance. Um, Scalp the scalp short the the in the amount of um, the risk is small. However, the market tie is up. I'd rather play the pullbacks against the trend. So I would love to get long anywhere. Uh, the one twenty nine fifty one is the support. I'd like to get long there, and um, and then long to one thirty fifty two. Then look for a break from one thirty fifty two. Next daily support. Uh, a resistance line is 131.28 so that is about um, say 76 pips right in there there's a 76 pip trade going on right there if your if your timing is right looking for that pullback a break above uh, uh, 1305 lead will open the door up to here okay so basically we're playing these lines like I said I drew these lines most majority of the lines were drawn at the end of February or beginning of February um, 
because I did the the Valentine's Day um, open house. So you got to figure that was two weeks before that. So all these lines were drawn in February, and they are still look how they are holding. Okay, and it's very simple to draw them. Uh, if you um, if you go to uh, if you you know, you know if you register for my Forex heat map um, for is a seven day free trial. You can get into my inner my um, not the inner circle, but into my VIP group, my Pip and Run VIP group, and there I have lessons on how to draw um, these support and resistance lines. And hey, not much stuff you can get for a dollar. You can get a donut maybe for a dollar, but you can't get quality stuff like I give you for a buck, right? So uh, what you can do is just come over here to my Forex heat map, and um, you can come over here and and click this um, subscribe today. Click here to our seven day free trial. Click it and uh, try it for seven days, and then you'll get access to our to, uh, you get access to the the Pip and Run group, the uh, the group online. And that is a very cool group that you can be part of. And if you like what you see, you want to stay with us, twenty-one ninety-nine a month. It's a great deal, right in here. You can join our the Pip and Run uh, Forex group, and uh, you know, trades from Rod Cox is there, the guy that uh, took uh, you no know, two thousand to twenty thousand. He's in there chatting away. Um, I post charts and news and trade ideas and things like that. Um, so if you want to join, come on in and uh, one dollar get you in. Talk. All right. So uh, we, we're looking at this again. I'm looking for a pullback 29.51. Let's move on to another currency pair. Keep it going. Keep it spicy. Aussie dollar 60 minute. Let's go here and then. Here we go, Aussie dollar. But uh, I want to take a look at those daily support and resistance lines. I'm going to take a glance at them just to make sure I missed any, didn't miss any old uh, highs and lows. And see, we, we all I did was drew these lines, and they just stay there. And sometimes something will stop prematurely, uh, like here. These all kind of stopped short of that 7468 line. They all kind of did that. Okay, um, so. And it's pretty interesting. We're bouncing off this area, and um, we're at 74.16 or so. No, no, 74.56. So we'll see what happens. I, I'd like to see a break above 74.76. It's a quarter line. Uh, let me get rid of these fibs. Cut. And get rid of these fibs here. Cut. Okay. And let me go ahead and save these changes. Save all pages. Okay. Yeah. So 7458 or so. And maybe we come back and, and we're sitting right on, on this between two levels of um, support. I guess we closed above it. And you could see 73, 7386. Be nice to tag that old low and give us a reason to, uh, to bounce. All the other currency pairs are going up. Aussie is still kind of weak. Um, you know, I mean, we could come back and test this low at 73.52. But so, you know, it's in a downtrend. It's below the 200. The bias is down. Um, but all the other currencies are moving against the US dollar, um, except for the Aussie. So let's go ahead and drop down to a 60 and just kind of like see what's going on. And you can see that maybe this is topping up, and uh, we could see um, Aussie maybe uh, give it up the ghost here. Below 74.45, uh, 74 I look for a move down to 74.16, right? 74.45. So you may want to take a screenshot of the chart. And let's say you like seeing that, you're like, oh, wow, Greg, you know, this is great, but I don't have these lines. And if you don't know how to draw the lines or whatever or not, what you can do is just take a screenshot of these. You know, like the I use Gyazo, you know, so you just take a screenshot. And if, if that's if you that's if you like if you if you want to trade uh, um if you if you want to trade um the Aussie dollar. And then once you trade in Gyazo, you have a screenshot, right? You can print that up, you know, you can put it on your wall, you can and then you can uh, or you can on your platform set alarms and on these areas, okay? So you can use this as a reference tool, okay? 
So these lines, you see how price bounces off and, you know, um, it, it broke and closed above it. And I you know, love to sell against 74.68 or buy on a break and look for a move to 74.90. You know, it starts getting lots of heavy resistance here. A lot of congestion here. So you just wonder, you know, um, you know, there is this kind of gapping space where it drops so hard. You know, and uh, see, we're in this congestion zone that's back here. This is, this is it. Oh, okay. Can't draw it. Won't come over. Okay. I want an ellipse. There we go. So we're in, we're currently in all that right here. If we were to extend this over, we're in that. Now, once we clear that 74, 60, 68, then look for that 74, 90, 7,500 coming into play. Then it's, we've got some open space because we've cleared above that. All that congestion that's back here, it extends. It has influence. And so once the price closes above that, we can start hitting these levels very quickly, right? We have a really powerful short squeeze rally up to the upside. And it's forming kind of like this kind of ascending, this wedge that's pointing up. Um, not um, so, but um, like I said, um, a bearish move, 74.47, 70, 74.45, could come back to take us to 7416 right where this support is okay so so watch those levels okay uh kiwi dollar let's uh do a quick uh quick look there um they're kind of you know geographically close and but look at that it's just been ranging for a long time and you want to stay away from stuff that's just not going anywhere fast right just nowhere fast, right? Um, and I don't have any lines here. Okay, kind of interesting. Oh, you know, I don't normally do this pair. That's probably why, because it's been moving sideways for the past, you know, since August. Okay, so, oh, this is Kiwi Cat. Come on, Greg. Ah, there we go. I thought, oh, you're like, yeah. I know I've had, I took two weeks off. I had a, you know, I had, a, you know, had an examination. Had to go to the doctor. You know, blah blah blah. Uh, you know, you gotta have those checkups and get those things done. Take care of business. So now I'm tripper and bright and ready to rock and roll. I apologize for the absence, guys. Um, and um, I missed you too. <laughs> definitely, definitely missed you guys. Uh, I would rather be in any day in front of the screen is a lot better than being in the hospital. I'll tell you one thing. Okay. Uh, yeah, this, I mean, we've got this gap down and this is consolidation. And so we look for a move back above 69.50. We're still below the 200 simple moving average, so it's kind of cautious. We get above 70.50, then we got some we got some good stuff going on here. 70, 70, 50, 50 50. We get above this 200 simple moving average. You know, the pound did that a long time ago. It broke above its 200 on a daily, and that was the rocket to, you know, it was cautious, 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 but when we got the 200, boom, where it was like, you know, and I'll show you, go back to the pound, and, okay, see, there's that 200 simple moving average, let me go ahead and remove this, cut, and cut, wow, that was a price target, right, so, that's the 200 simple moving average, and we got, we got above it, and then boom, right, but you see, going up there, it was sideways, sideways, sideways. Then the big signal candle right here, like, whew, come on, guys, it's feeding time, right? And now everything, all the all the counts, all the Elliott wave counts are bullish to the upside. They're all they're all an, an uptrend. We're above the 200 simple moving average, and bulls live above the 200 simple moving average, guys. Bears live below. So now we're in the bull neighborhood. We're in a good neighborhood. We're in an uptrending neighborhood, especially on a daily chart. Once you cross this line, it you know it's got a long way to go. You know we got a long, 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 long way to go. I mean we've got Brexit to come back against, right? So we just broke out of the channel. We have a breakout on a daily. 
you know, we've got a long way to go, right? One spot five zero zero. That's like three two thousand pips from now. Talk to me in three in two thousand pips. Tell me how you did. Throw throw a one k lot in an account and put it to sleep and uh, come back in like December. Okay, um, let's keep it going. Uh, let's look at the yen pair. Let's look at the dollar yen. One of my favorites there. Or yeah, did we good? And we can see um, real sloppy stuff. We had an uptrend, and we have a downtrend. Then we had an uptrend and a downtrend. So we, have, but we do have higher swing lows, higher lows. We have a lower high and a lower high. And a higher low and a higher low. So we have a big triangle. What does that mean, Greg? It's like, oh, dude, it's one big triangle. Indecision. Not the best, um, you know. But the thing about it is that these triangles lead to breakouts. When you have higher swing, lower swing highs and higher swing lows, it's indecision. The bears are trying to push it down. Bulls are trying to drive it up. And it creates this wedging triangle you know, symmetrical triangle, which can go either way. And, you know, and we're looking at a break above one, uh, 114 and a half. Then we get a shot back at 118, a uh, break below 108 in the south side. And then we're looking at, you know, 100, you know. And uh, any of this can happen very quickly. Um, the yens are very sensitive to, to geopolitical events, rocket launches, earthquakes, tsunamis. You know, war, famine, upheaval, any of that stuff. You know, the yen's kind of like you know, everybody runs into the yen and the U.S. Treasuries um, for safety. So let's go down, drop down to a sixty and uh, get a closer look, and we can see help safety. You know, um, you know, you had the two, uh, you know, an assault on a um, um, a man tried to break into uh, the airplane cockpit and uh, was stopped by a drink cart. Hey, thank God for those drink carts. And um, so, and then that plane was escorted by fighter jets. Ooh. And uh, I don't think those fighter jets, what are those fighter jets guys going to do? Um, I mean, they can't get the guy that's inside. Um, but you know, if the guy gets control of the plane and tries to run into a, to a building or something, I think that plane is going down. You know, I don't think seeing two fire jets in your you know, in your plane is not a is not a happy sight. <laughs> you are not going to get saved if, if they're there. Um, so, so like take you guys take take the guy down. <laughs> That's what you gotta do. Take the guy down, or they're gonna splash you. That's what, that's what it comes down to. And no one's saying that. Oh well, we the Air Force is there, flying alongside. Like, why are they there? They're gonna shoot you down. <laughs> Take the guy down. <laughs> anyway, that's <laughs> just I I'm digressing. Um, hopefully there's a flight marshal on your flight and everything's great. Uh, just plead the blood of Jesus Christ over it and pray. Okay. Three, four, and five. Uh, yen looks like it wants to retest. Uh, low of um, one ten twenty one. Look at this hit one eleven fifty two over and over and over again. One, two, three. Knock three times on the ceiling if you want me. Tony Orlando and Don nineteen seventy four. Putting out the hits, baby. Knock three times on the ceiling if you want me. But it looks like rejection here. Three, uh, three strikes and you're out. And we can see the uh, dollar yen uh, currently trading at 111.26. Give a shot back down to about the 110.23 area. Now, if we do get some type of break above 111.52, then the 200 moving averages hang in there like an electrical wire dangling from a tree. Going to shock some squirrel. 112.49 um, is what we're looking at. Um, uh, that we should see price capped if we got above this. But rejection, 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 usually drop down to support down there, right? Um, that is 110.52. So uh, bearish on dollar yen. Now, bearish in dollar yen, let's take a look at euro yen. Euro yen was my friend today. I love euro yen. And, um, and I took it long from, uh, tw from 20, yeah, 24, 10 or so. And uh, I got it 60, but it, it rallied up some more. But you know, 
make nine hundred nine hundred dollars on a Friday is a nice a nice bit of change. Yeah, nice bit of change indeed. So let's go ahead and uh, so now here, um, you know, it has a bear. I mean, it's kind of bearish, but it's not. I mean, higher highs and higher lows. But we have we made a lower low and a lower high, and so that indicates that we're in some type of a downtrend, and we need to see, you know. That is our new. Um, you know, we have this low and a lower high. Now we just need a another lower low. So we have one lower low, so that's what our channel looks like. So uh, we'll see uh, if, if we move beyond that. And I don't have. I didn't draw any daily support and resistance on this. I don't think. No, I don't think. I think the way in pair or. Oh, there we go. One twenty six sixty. I haven't put anything recently on this. So, but the old. If you look at the old high, twenty five seventy five. We break that line. If we break twenty five. The figure whole number round number is a is a resistance natural resistance area, and so it's acting as resistance. Twenty five one twenty seat. The twenty five zero zero. We got right there, and boom, bankers resistance stopped us. But whole number round number. People took profit right there. And uh, so we get above that, then you know we look for a rally back into 2581. Okay. Now I just want I just want to see another yen pair because the dollar yen is not proxy for all yen pairs. You know, dollar yen beats to its own drum; it beats to the drum of the dollar. And um, while euro yen, Aussie yen beat to the drum of risk appetite, and euro yen is going is usually going to follow uh, euro dollar. Okay, usually, and you probably could take a look at Euro Kiwi too, um, but I'm not. <laughs> okay, uh, look at I'm gonna look at Dollar CAD. Finish this up because uh, Canada is our neighbor to the north here, and uh, sometimes um, and it's also tied to oil. So oil has been has gone up. Um, Saudi Arabia has pledged to uh, reduce the amount the you know reduce production, and that's sending the loony higher versus the U.S. dollar, as you can see on this chart. And it's inverse, you know, it's inverse chart. It's USD versus CAD. So when the chart goes down, CAD is getting stronger. And you can see, uh, uh, turn right that 38.67 area didn't quite get there. Turn and drop. So we might see this actually rally up a little one two three down, a little one two three up, and provides a nice little short opportunity at 36.99. That's a 3700 whole number round number. So we may see some type of you know, the news that, you know, some country is not going to uh, adhere to the production cuts and that'll give you a little bit of rally, right? And down that rally, that's where you want to, like, take that baby back down. Big time. Okay. So, as long as we stay below 138.67, I'm looking for this baby to uh, continue to drop. However, look for a rise. You know, it's, see, look how oversold this is. Lower swing highs, lower swing lows. And it's a five, a five, a five, trip five, trip fives. And then so, you know, it's a five within a five, within a five. And usually when we get that kind of a configuration, we have like a um, ending diagonal and price rallies up. And we can give it kind of an idea where price could take off from that area. And we're looking at price rally from this 135.07. 3500 is a whole number round number, so we might even eke down to the whole number round number zero zero one three five zero zero. That's a round number ends in zero zero. The ending number makes a lot of, you know, maybe people don't tell you that. Okay, Greg ends in the zero zero. What does that mean? Well, it means that a lot of people have their stops because they don't want to do the math with odd numbers. That's why you shouldn't you shouldn't put your stops at even numbers or round numbers like zero zero or ending in five zero or zero because that's where they're you know usually prices will drop down to naturally. So we see this may turn here and and where's my Fibonacci? And then we, we wanted to see uh, if we got down to thirty five zero zero we could rally and there's lots of congestion here. There's a six one eight at one thirty six oh five, one thirty five eighty eight. This is a zone where I would like to get short. 
I'm going to put this box on here because it will give me a, it'll send me a little alert and say, hey, Greg, you need to sell this, right? It has a little, little alert box. So it's a smart box. So there you go. So we can see that possibly a rally back up into here or um, maybe even higher gives a nice short opportunity to resume the short trade on on the uh, dollar cat. Okay, and to make sure I got everything, we got Euro, we got CAD, we talked about New Zealand dollar, we talked about pound, we talked about Aussie dollar, we talked about gold already, and the dollar Swiss. Dollar Swiss. I haven't really talked about the dollar Swiss a whole lot, but guess what? The dollar is getting creamed, so guess what? Dollar Swiss shorts are nice. And this was the one, too. Remember I drew this channel? <laughs> See, this channel. If you remember, I drew, I connected these two swing points and extended the light into the future. Oh, the future just came, right? And I drew, connected these two lines, and ooh, future came here, and look, boom, and not the future of the wrapper, which was cool. And there we go. There we go. So we came down. So again, we're at wave five of five of five. This is a 60 minute chart. We're in a cluster, a cluster of support here. 97, 27. Look for some type of a rebound back up to the 98, 20 area. And then we can resume, you know, we might see some type of rebound, right? And then from that rebound, this would be a great, great area to go short. Okay. We go. You can go long for a short time or short for a longer time, right? Why? Because this is a counter trend move. Notice the market tide is down. This is like a big giant avalanche, and and then the guy, the skier guy, wants to ski against the avalanche, right? And then he's gonna get wiped out, or maybe somebody on a surfboard or something, you know, and he's surfing against a big tsunami. That's a big. Think of this as a big tidal wave, and you're gonna get a little bit of. Every, look at how small the retracements are. They're green, a little bit of green, and then red. A little bit of green, and then red. So you can kind of see it. And look at this. Red, green, green, red, green. So just, there's more red than green. So it kind of tells you that you should be shorting it. But if you short it here, you're going to lose because we're hitting a lot of support. Price rallies, and you're like, but look, Greg is a downtrend. It's below the 200 so moving average. I got short. You got short at the bottom. And friends don't let friends, you know, buy resistance and sell support, right? <laughs> you want to buy support and sell resistance or drive drunk, right? Get the keys. Take away that mouse. Take it. Unplug his keyboard. Don't do it. Don't, don't, don't do it, baby, baby. Okay. Dollar Swiss. Okay. So that's it. We're looking for a rally back up from here. You could scalp it. You know, but don't think you're going to get a thousand pips out of this. You know, you want to be out, pip and run, hit and run, scalp it up, and then get out and then load up for the long, I mean, for the short, to the short side. Okay. The ball has to bounce. And then once it finishes, these guys, these guys are short, so they're taking profit. They've made all this money, but they can't make any money unless they buy their position back. When they buy their position back, what happens to the price? It goes up. So it's not people, and there's some people, oh, I'm picking the bottom, right? But it's not it's not supposed to last. But probabilities are we're below the 200, right? This thing has been scoring. If this was like somebody's GPA, this guy's been failing, 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 failing. And then he may get a couple of you know, lucky lucky Cs, lucky Ds. But then no, he's, he goes back to his old below the trend, right? His trend is down. Okay. So... Hopefully you guys learned something there. If you did, make sure you favorite this video, share it with somebody, tell a friend, and uh, let's go ahead and go into the news part and analyze what's going on for um, coming this coming week. All right, this miss man, this month of May is gone by fast, fast and furious. Okay, but you know, it gets to the end of the month, you know, things get a little bit more. Uh, you know, um, sometimes you get lower volumes and things like that in month ends. But let's take a look at what's going on. I'm looking at red. This, I'm looking at Forex Factory. Forex Factory has a really great calendar. And I like the calendar because it refreshes itself like just before the news. And, you know, it'll have a little green circle there. 
and I don't know how they do it. They do it almost as fast, like a Bloomberg terminal. They'll tell you exactly what the number is and everything. A lot of the other calendars that I've seen, they don't do that. And that's why I like using Forex Factory. And I like those little, I call them folders, but they're little red factories that show you that there's high impact. There's your group meetings all day, May 22nd. And, you know, if we do it, and there's a bank holiday in Canada, so we're going to have light, lighter volume there. And, um, We've got a bunch of Fed speakers and and a Bank of Canada speakers too. I only like I want to look at the red ones. German IFO business climate that's coming out. One twelve. I don't see any forecasts. I don't know, maybe it's too early for a forecast. But one twelve is a previous number. Pretty you no know, over over hundred. It's pretty good, right? So we'll see if that number comes out better than expected. The uh, but you know it's a Tuesday, so you know it's going up. The Cubs going up on a Tuesday, right? So we could see um, you know. Lackluster moves on Monday. Tuesday may see a continuation of trend. 4 a.m. Look for that German IFO business climate to possibly move the euro higher. All right. Then at 5 a.m. we're gonna have the UK with the inflation report hearings, and that's uh, no. Those are usually pretty. Um, they they can really move the market, and um, if those hearings turn out to be you know show that there's inflation, like they did have inflation last time, CPI was up, so. Usually, the anything about inflation will cause the British pound to rise, or cause any currency to rise. Inflation, it gets out of hand, then the central bank has to come in and start raising rates. People, when they raise rates, people want to get that interest, so they start buying more of the currency, and the currency demand goes up. Looking as people seek high yield, and that causes the pound to rally, or any currency to rally. Usually, okay. However, if they say that, hey, the inflation is not that bad, then we could actually see the pound weaken. But given the trend, let's see what happens here at 5 a.m. Inflation report, UK, it's a high impact. Be there, 5 a.m. I'm looking at anything pound versus something getting long. Pound Aussie, probably my probably my favorite to look at. Then you have Draghi's going to speak, 8.45. ECB President Draghi's going to speak. And you know, um, if he mentioned anything about currencies at 8:45, we could see a big move in the euro. Um, the euro is on a, in an uptrend, so um, I would play the trend. Uh, we do have, and we don't have the U.S. data. I mean, we have home price index month on month that comes out, um, but it's not a very high impact. But home prices um, usually impact a little bit more than they give it credit. So I would pay attention to it. Uh, especially if it's low and if it does it surprise the, the downside that could send the euro higher remember the euro is the anti-dollar so it'll be most affected by it bank of canada re-announcement you know the canadian dollar will be in play and be interesting what the the statement will be um if they try to talk it down uh, uh interest rate announcements are very sp scary um because you can see big long wicks and you can have, yeah, I know it's going to go up. I know they're going to do this. And, and you get a wick, a big long wick up and a big long wick down. And where is your stop? I mean, you're, you know, you get margin called just because of the big long wick. So I would wait for a couple of minutes after it and let the price settle down and then, um, then take it, then take a position. Maybe 10, 15 minutes is all you got to wait till all that, that, that shaky volatility, you know, they'll sp spike up, spike down, spike up. Things kind of end, and that way uh, you, um, because what happens is the market becomes illiquid. Big, the the big money gets out of the market, and so now you don't have those price. You have no, you have prices moving, the price discovery, looking for these new levels, and they're looking for these levels, and there's nobody there, and he keeps going to finds the uh, level of liquidity. So, and you get in there, and your your liquidity, <laughs> you get hit. So. Um, but once the big guys come back after the announcement, liquidity comes back in the market. Now there are price levels. There is people. There are buyers and sellers at different price levels to keep that price in check, and the, so the, it doesn't um, jump all over the place. Um, existing home sales comes out, medium impact. Uh, FOMC meeting minutes is going to be very good as well, and it will give us an idea of whether we're going to have a rate cut in June. Or they're going to hold off and if they hold off um, then uh, we could probably see the dollar further weekend okay now Thursday we have bank holidays in France 
in Germany as well. And we're going to have a, a bank holiday in the U.S., uh, Memorial Day on Monday. And so that's going to, um, you know, might see. Now, the rest of the world is going to be open for trading. And so you can still trade your, your desk check. If you, you know, if you trade off a U.S. desk, the U.S. desk may be closed. Other countries' desks will be open. Um, now, we have a second GDP estimate coming out of the U.K. on Thursday. And uh, that's at 0.3%. No forecast. We usually get some nice little forecasts here. I think the Forex Factory people, maybe they were on vacation too. But usually they're pretty good at giving you a forecast of what that's going to happen. But GDP may be impacted negatively because of Brexit. And because, you no, know, maybe some slowdown. Maybe some companies decide not to or move their business to Ireland or move out, outside of the UK. Um, but, but we will see. Okay, uh, but GDP is good. You know, we can see big, huge uh, GDP uh, announcement. Um, sometimes they call it a lagging indicator because all the other indicators are kind of like, you know, all piled into GDP. And you already saw those indicators already, so there's no surprises. But GDP used to be as big as non-farm payroll, and I used to uh, uh, trade on the desk. Okay, um, unemployment claims. Uh, yeah, we have, oh, OPEC meetings. OPEC meetings. Now, yeah, if you don't trade oil, that's you know, it won't affect you. But if you trade the Canadian dollar, Canadian dollar is like a proxy for oil. And so, you know, I would watch whatever comes out of that meeting. Um, if you're trading Canadian dollar, I would just stare clear. I mean, you've got, um, yeah, you have the Bank of Canada and then you have the OPEC meeting. So um, you might want to just, uh, be, be wary. It can provide you an opportunity. Remember, crisis is an opportunity. You know, that's a for fortune, you know, put, put those together. Um, I heard that was a misnomer too, but it, it's poetic and it sounds nice, right? Unemployment claims come out in the U.S. They they fluctuate two hundred thirty-two thousand. If they come out better than expected or higher than expected, higher than expected is bad. You know, more people unemployed is not good, and that could weaken the U.S. dollar. However, uh, unemployment claims if they drop, then that's usually good for the U.S. dollar. But remember, any of these news pops that are favorable to the dollar are against a bearish trend which is going now. So any bullish pops will be uh, time to uh, take positions in the opposite direction. All right. Hope you understood that. Um, and you're not confused, but let me know. Get me a question. Greg at Elite Traders U, EliteTradersU.com. Send me an email. Let me know if you have any questions about what I've discussed here or trading ideas or even how to get started in my Pip and Run trading program or my Elite Traders University Institute or the Pip and Run Bootcamp. All those are available to you. Just so you can contact Kara at Lead Traders U and sign up, and uh, and uh, and you sign up for a free strategy session where you can talk to her, find out what your goals are, find out you know, and you have someone to talk to you about your trading, and she knows trading like the back of her hand, and she can help you to lay out a plan, and see if it makes sense for us to work with each other. The call is free. You can just contact us. Uh, you can contact Kara at EliteTradersU.com, K-A-R-A, and uh, let her know that you want to talk, all right? Okay, so that's going to end it for me. I know we got uh, durable goods orders, a big thing on Friday, um, and uh, we'll see if that's good. Core, core durable goods, that's, you know, autos and airplanes, and refrigerators, and uh, those things take a few years, you know, months to make. And the orders come years in advance. So that a good core durable goods number is good for the U.S. economy. A lower durable goods number is pretty bad and it could send the dollar even lower. Okay. It might be pretty interesting to see. You know, if this uh, this uh, quarter on quarter, three months, you know, where, you know, three months we're into the Trump administration and the in the uh, the Trump, uh, the, the, the effect of, you know the the Trump effect, and you see the you know the you know the stock market just going higher, and we'll see if this you know these numbers are 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 going in agreement with the stock market. Okay, and we have University of Michigan Consumer Confidence as well, ninety-seven point seven, and you know that you know it gets close to one hundred. It's pretty good, right? It means people are confident, and if they're confident, they buy more, and if they buy more, it makes the dollar stronger. However, if we do have fear and maybe some of the things, some of the political things here at home um, with the FBI investigation and Russia and all that stuff, 
to see if the American people really care. That's really that. This is going to be a gauge of whether you know does the news media care more about it or does do consumers do? If that thing rocks at ninety eight ninety nine, they say we don't care. Dashboya, you know, whatever they say in, in Russia, you know, um, and and they'll just keep them going their merry way. And it could be just only only the media elite or something that might be concerned about it. So um, anyway. That's enough. For, that's enough of my my uh, things there. But again, I uh, want to invite you to follow me on Twitter if you would like, um, and, or, or have a YouTube channel as well. And you can watch my videos there. And you probably say, "Well, gee, Greg, I'm going to see this video." The link that I'm sending you will be there as well. But I do have a lot of other uh, videos as well that might be entertaining. And uh, let me know uh, what you think about them. Let me know if you have any ideas, suggestions. You can always email me at greg at elitetradersu.com. And also, if you want to join my Elite Traders, uh, the, the Pip and Run group, you can join for a dollar. Try it out. And uh, if you want to join for a year, you can you can join it for, for a year and be, have access to my Forex heat map, my favorite Forex scalping tool that uh, I've developed. It helps me know what's popping, what's hopping, and what's dropping, and what's not in the market. And uh, the great thing about it is being able to being able to um, see the currencies which are on fire, you know. Because, you know, to go through you know, 28 charts and then try to find something, and then, you know, you're waiting all day long for a currency pair like, you know, Charlie Brown or like Linus and Sally and the great pumpkin patch waiting for a great pumpkin to come you know and everyone else is trick-or-treating and you're not getting anything because you're in the wrong currency pair right and if you've ever been in the wrong currency pair and then see someone else get a whole bunch of currency uh, a whole bunch of pips you know it's kind of like wow why did i trade that well you didn't know and my forex heat map can actually help you now right now all the pairs are gray i'm trying to show you a sample of it everything is gray here but ordinarily <laughs> i mean during market hours i mean Desk, train desk. This is like to tell you, like, so like people email, me, hey, Greg, the heat map doesn't work. It's like, yeah, it's Greg. It's like market's closed. Hello. Um, so the market, <laughs> no, I, I'm I'm more polite than that. But anyway, um, this was this SUI 30 is always in the green for some odd reason, but that's the only one that's in the green. Um, now, for instance, we had uh, a nice little. I'll, I'll give you a screenshot screenshot magic there we go markets now open no it's not um and we had we had oil up 1.54 percent euro was up 7.74 percent uh we had a uh, year yet up 0.83 percent so you got like you got a theme here look raw materials natural gas oil copper are up right then the yen pairs are up and pound yen euro yen euro dollar silver right and your yen pairs are up and the nasdaq 100 was up as well so all these are up so these are things that you don't want to short you want to be long because that's what happened in the heat map this was on uh, uh may 19 2017 at uh 10 uh, 10 04 a.m okay so i you know i look at the heat map around i say around maybe seven in the morning and see what's popping what's dropping maybe 7 30 see what's popping what's dropping and what's hot and then you know then I then I have a basket of stuff to look at, right? I'm gonna stay away from the stuff that's gray. You know, a bunch of stuff is gray. I don't. I'm not looking at that stuff. I go look. It's moving 0.01 percent, right? I want stuff that's broken out 0.3 or more, better, you know. And then you know, to start trading from there. So that's the my forex heat map. And again, you can get a um, free access to that by just. Um, just going ahead to myforexheatmap.com and then go ahead and click the subscribe now to the free trial. Okay, so you guys have a great day, a great, a great, great, great uh, trading week. Email me if you have any questions, concerns, or you know, you want any ideas. I am your mentor, your trading coach. Signing off. Happy pip and cheers. Bye.